Hello, welcome to a, a Bible study of uh, the Banking Blessings Ministry. Today we are at the beginning of a four-part series and I invite uh, my wife, Obi Hoffi, to describe what the content of this series. Welcome uh, viewers and listeners. Um, this is indeed another blessed month for Banking Blessings Ministry. Recently in the month of April, precisely on the 11th of April 2015, Banking Blessings held her first seminar of what we hope would be come an annual seminar for the ministry. The seminar was titled Power of Strategic Alliance. It's, a, it's her first seminar in the series or talking about principles of human relationships. It was indeed an outpouring of God's teachings and what God wants us to know concerning relationships uh, that he brings our way. How do we recognize these relationships? Why do we need these relationships? And what kinds of relationships do we have that come across our way? How can we recognize these different types of relationships? And most of all, how can we prepare ourselves with the right kind of heart to attract these relationships, nourish them, and foster them? It was indeed a seminar of seminars, and we will be releasing the proceedings to you, our followers, our viewers, our listeners, in a four-part series, which will be in the next four Bible study sessions of Banking Blessings Ministry. The first in the series will be tit is titled Strategic Alliance, the what and why. What is Strategic Alliance and why Strategic Alliance? And the second will be principles of strategic alliance. What do we need? This alliance, it doesn't just come our way for us to treat it anyhow. Everything, God is an orderly God. God is a God of order. There are principles and ways he has set for us to achieve and be blessed by the things he has put across our way. What are these principles? We shall be learning that in the second part of the series. The third part is titled the third the perfect excuse me the perfect heart for strategic alliance part one the bible tells us that he who must be who must have friends must first of all show himself friendly what kind of nature what kind of heart what kind of preparations what kind of human being do you need to be what kind of character do you need to have for you to be able to attract the right kind of strategic alliance and finally, we will end it with the second part of Perfect Heart for Strategic Alliance. And I know you will be awesomely blessed as you listen. Bringing these messages to us is a chosen vessel in the hands of God Almighty. And indeed, a very good teacher, Bishop Francis Bob Alonge. He is the Bishop of the Covenant Assembly Ministries and a director of Banking Blessings Ministry. Here is Bishop Bob Alonge. I challenge you, if a man must have friends, he must first show himself friendly. And that is the kind of heart it takes. Imagine what it would be like if we had homes and families where wives are not competing with their husbands when husbands don't care who brings in the bacon. It's not my salary, your salary, it's our salary. Imagine what it will be like in homes because life passes through seasons. Seasons. Seasons you can't predict, seasons you would not foresee. Seasons where we can stand and bear one another's burden, when we can share of one another's successes, when we can support each other. And all we care about is to see God at work and see his work flourish and see 
God's will being done on the earth. What abundance, what grace, what blessing that would be. It's my heart's passion, Lord, everywhere I go. I want to see your hand at work and I want to help to make it happen. Doesn't matter if I'm on the billboard or I'm not on the billboard, but I want to be where the rubber hits the road, where I see the hand of God. I want to function and operate in the wisdom of the other boat. I've, I've, I've shared this in so many places. One of the places where I, I shared this with all my preaching, my heart out, when I finished and mm -hmm. handed the microphone over to the pastor, guess what he did? He took the microphone and said, where? The Lord has said we will be the head and not the tail. <laughs> you can choose which one you want to be. I will be the chosen vessel. Everybody say, Amen. <laughs> And then when the message <laughs> I went away dejected, discouraged. I, I lack the words, but I hope somebody listening to the sound of my voice understands, understands the perfect heart. The heart that God blesses. The wisdom of the other books. We wouldn't have competition. When somebody passes you a compliment, you're not going to say, hey, well, yes, it's so. I'm, I'm the Mr. Big Shot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Will you finish this message with me? Let's ask, ask questions. And I really need real answers. Because this is where it applies in your life. What could the chosen vessel do to make it easier for the other boat to follow? What do you think? Sharing. Sharing. Many a times, many chosen vessels just show. They don't share. I want you to see where I've been. I want you to see what I've done. I want you to see what I have. I want you to see my accolades, my medals, my trophies. They show and not share. One of the things I think is important for the chosen vessel is to have a heart to share. Awesome answer, fantastic. What else do we think? To be humble. To be humble. That's why we started with that. Just understand you're just another boat. Just another boat. When you have one, two, three successes, don't publish a book. <laughs> don't write it. Have you noticed? There are 16 church growth <laughs> books. 16 that have made international worldwide waves and none of them preach the same thing one of them tells you it's faith the other one tells you it's prayer the other one says it's one hour every day another one says it is positive thinking do you understand what i'm trying to say everybody is writing book but there's only one truth and the truth is that jesus entered their boat period are you getting my point <laughs> humble humble be humble be humble Recognize that this could have happened to anybody. Recognize that this could have been your neighbor, not you. Recognize that God empowering you is to position you to empower someone else. Humility. What else? I think the chosen boat was transparent and they kept the other boats in a close distance so that they could see all that was going on. The, the chosen vessel was transparent, didn't hide it. You know, let me tell you a story that, that buttresses what you're saying. I used to have a guy in my church. His business fell apart after two years. He ran a laundry when the city of Abuja was really small. And he divided his company into three departments. Procurement department, public relations department, and, and marketing, public relations and marketing, and then production department. So procurement, production, and then public relations. You know what he did? He made sure they operated from two different buildings so they never met each other. <laughs> so the guys in procurement never knew how to do the production. They couldn't do the work. They knew where to buy the chemicals. They knew where to buy the nylon that you put the clothes in. They knew where to buy all of that. And he never transferred anybody from one department to the other. He kept them separate because he didn't want them to know 
what was going on. The guys in marketing and public relations, the guys who collect the clothes from you, the guys who go from house to house, they never smelt the factory. They never knew how the work was done. And he thought he was being wise. And the idea would be somebody would work for me for 10 years and still wouldn't be able to be my competition. <laughs> he wasn't transparent. He wasn't transparent. And we think that's wise. That's the way the world does business. Mm. But you know, the truth is, you cannot be a success without a successor. Mm. God delights in us, not just bearing fruit, but he also delights in us multiplying. Bearing fruit is having something you produce. Multiplying is producing somebody else just like you. And it's God's commandment, be fruitful, multiply. It's, <laughs> it's not risky anywhere. Because it's a commandment of God. God will back you up. Every culture in this world that has ever succeeded and broken beyond the boundaries has been premised upon this. Let me tell you, the Jews, what's their system? A Jewish man would carry an apprentice, will show him everything he knows, and it's in, in the scriptures. It says, let not anybody serve himself of his brother being an Hebrew for more than seven years. On the seventh year, you are to let him go and you are to facilitate his going. How can I facilitate my competition? That's the way of God. He says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And the Jewish man builds you, shares everything he knows and releases you to go stand on your own. And God blesses him the more. And God blesses him the more. Human thinking is so limited. How can I do that? It's not going to work. But are the Jews not the most wealthy in the world? Yes, they own all of Wall Street. They own all of the Swiss banks. They are the top in every nation and in every single field. I was going to ask Brother Goodluck where he bought these cameras from. Because I know the best and biggest store for anything audiovisual in this country is B&H photo video in New York. I've been there a couple of times. I buy my stuff from there. And you'll find 300 Jews working for one Jew. None of them works beyond seven years. And at the end of seven years, they've passed through every single department. They know how to make the whole thing work. And when they go start off their businesses, because B&H has been faithful to them, they want to make themselves an extension of B&H. And the business keeps blooming. Who are the people in Nigeria that are most enterprising and they are found in every place and every country and every village? Tell me, who are they? They are the magnate. Ebos. <laughs> what system do they run? One man will serve another man for years. And after a year, you set him up to go start. You teach him everything you know. <clears throat> and they succeed. Yes, you are right, you are right. That's what they used to do. That's why they are losing their edge now. Because they are learning what every other person is doing and they are believing the lie that it's not going to work. So you have Ife Sinachi will start off Young Shagro. Young Shagro will start off Rapido. Rapido will start off ABC Motor. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And they never run into a problem. Because... Chain link. Help each other. To help each other. Yeah. Because it's a spiritual law. Which companies? In which fields? Look at Nigeria. Which companies are the best in accounting? Which companies are the best in law? If you look at all of them, Akintola Williams, Rotimi Williams, um, Arthur Anderson, do you know what their system is? They take you in. They call you a trainee. They stay with you for a couple of years. Then they make you a partner. You are not being paid a salary. You are being paid a portion. Then eventually you become a co-owner. Or they release you to go set up on their own. And they keep going from level to level, from grace to grace. So the guy who separates production <laughs> from marketing to procurement he thinks he's wise but in his wisdom he has made himself a fool 
Hallelujah. What else? What else? We said number one. I, I think the, the for, for me, the the source was Jesus stepping into the boat. And the source never left the boat. You know, there's no point in time when when we're told that Jesus stepped off of that boat. And obedience was the key. He kept doing whatever the source was saying. And the people obeyed. And so there was a reward that kept coming. I think what happens to us is, is whatever we start in, in the spirit, we often tend to want to enter into the flesh. flesh. And, and when we enter into the flesh, that's when we, we begin the being proud because now we're thinking we've done something special. And then we don't, the, nobody wants to follow us anymore. <laughs> because all of a sudden, the, this is the, you know, the, the, the person that we all knew, we could all reach, now has too much anointing that has seven bodyguards around him mm. that we can't get to. So yeah. everybody said, you know what, let's go start our own. You know, so I, I think some of that... Can we call yeah. that simplicity? So. You know, I believe, the Bible says, let us be fearful. Mm. Let us be careful, lest we be moved from the simplicity yeah. that is in it. We sometimes make things complicated. complicated yeah. <laughs> Success tends to bring so much complication into our lives, you no longer answer your own phone calls. Mm. Yeah. Somebody carries your you can't drive your own car anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be accessibility? Yes. I think everybody at every level needs to manage their access. Yeah. Otherwise, it will kill out. your productivity. Yeah. And it gets more important the more successful you are. But I think you have to still remain simple Same. and sincere. Yeah, sincerity. Simple and sincere. I think, I think the secret behind it, <coughs> the was talking, talking about, in, my, in our career, of course, I was so curious and I was asking questions. What well, does everyone do those bridges? But well, discover that our people are talking about you right now. When they go to that business, when they give you something on credit, they don't pay back. When you say you're going to give your money, they, they don't see you. So trust, the basic trust, which is between them, is, is lacking. And that's why you have some people more successful than the others. I think I think they face everybody faces the same thing. The, the truth is the same Igbo guys. They have people who come and collect on credit and don't pay because their customers are not evil. They are selling to everybody who comes to the market. You know, I really realize they face the same temptations we face. We don't think our, our situation is unique, but the truth is they've put a spiritual principle to work. They've inadvertently stumbled upon a principle that God ordained and because of that God himself blesses it God himself blesses it you know and we preach in church give and it will be given unto you somebody will tap don't listen to them they want your money <laughs> now the same word is being preached but to one it is mixed with faith to another he has 1,000 reasons why it won't work at the end of the day, God blesses one and doesn't bless the other. The same person who was saying, don't listen to that. Now begins to say, there's favoritism in this church. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? And he never seems to see the real reason. Get God's engagement, get God's favor in whatever you're doing, and God's blessing will make the difference. It will make the difference. I, I, I'm seeing, listen, in ministry, Let's take churches as an example. In ministry, or any business, any business whatsoever. If I open my heart, my life, pour out my skill, sink my reputation or lay my reputation on the line for someone else who comes under me, I carry his mistakes because when you are training people, they will make mistakes and they don't pay the price. You pay the price. And I do all that, and then he goes and he sets up his own church. Is the kingdom of God not better for it? Yes. It's better for it. 
it's better for it. So why won't God bless me? You have more church, more people being reached. It's the same with the hospital. It's the same with an accounting firm. It's the same with whatever it is. The world becomes the better for it. Because you've passed something good and it's not about you, you, you. It's about the will of God being done in the earth. And when God sees a man who can have that perfect heart, his blessings will pursue, overshadow, and set him apart and set him on high. Amen. Amen. I do a lot of work in the media, a lot of work in the media. I've had the privilege of training people from some of the world's biggest institutions, BBC, NTA, AIT, etc., etc., etc. And when they come to some of, we call it media masterclass. When they come to our masterclasses, they get up and give an opportunity for people to, you know, share what they think about what they did. And there's one thing they keep on saying in common: you, 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 you share too much. <laughs> Nobody does this. You share too much. You told us where you get the stuff from. You told us the little cheats, the ways you can do much with so little. You, you didn't need to do that. All we paid was this much. You are literally setting up us up to be your competition. Yeah. They said you want to teach so badly that you're actually killing yourself. Yeah. And yet, every time we do another conference, everybody comes scrambling. Today, if I open my mouth and I say I want to do anything media-wise, it works. Because God blesses. I call it the wisdom of the other boat. You know, that, 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 is, a, that is a principle that is as old as, and yet, it, we, if only we can get more people out, you know, to teach it, to speak it. Camera. To teach it, you know. Um, there's a saying in, you know, among the Yoruba. I don't know whether you've ever heard. That's too deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 you know, this what what just this 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 is this is something that will transform lives. Just like when people say you teach too much, you share too much. And when when our uncle said, you know, uh, we'll live worse in Nigeria. Well, the fact that we do that in Nigeria is the is part of the problem. And that's why this message is necessary, especially in the body of Christ. We are supposed to give ourselves. And that's basically what this is. And if we can give ourselves, whether we're in the leadership role or we're the ones following, there's just bound to be, you know, success all around. You know what, uh, why I said that? It's a, it's a, I had a school idea, okay? When I went to come here, like four years ago, I had a we just tell you to now and share everybody take because it's the senior level of their church. But guess what? We did that, we had this pastor almost 8 million naira from us. What did that do? She went, bought a building very close to our school that's and that's tried to hijack all the students. And so that's why I said this. Yeah, but, but sir, what I'm saying is this. The reason why she she's doing that, or she did that, is she didn't have access to a class like this. You, you, see, you see what I'm saying? And you must have a place where you start. You see, that, and that's why, uh, for me, hearing this, you know, we, we we started something where we're trying to achieve something like this here. You know, uh, but what I'm just saying is, for you to have a package seminar that does this, it just blows my mind. Honestly, and, I, and I'm just blessed by it. Yeah, I'm so happy that I came. I'm just so blessed that I came. And sir, I, I, I feel you, sir. <laughs> and I can understand it. And trust me, something I myself have passed through. It was very painful to Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you know the interesting thing? It's not a Nigerian problem. 
I've heard in my years of traveling and pastoring, I've heard white Americans weep and cry with a broken heart because it happened to them. I've heard black Americans right, weep and cry Antonio. that it's happened right. to them. I've heard pastors in England and businessmen in China who say exactly the same thing. It's a human problem. It's not a uniquely Nigerian problem. Trust me that it isn't. In fact, there's a whole bunch of people, they think they are the most successful people on Wall Street these days, that all their business is, is to buy off smaller businesses that are succeeding, take it over and sell it off and liquidate it. They have no heart to what is it. So it's not, a pro it's not a Nigerian problem. That's the point I'm making. That it's a human, it's a sin problem. It's a human nature problem. But it is, it is a lion that is in the way for everybody else. For everybody. So we will face it. But the important thing is, it's God that blesses. We've had people leave us, go set up their own school, over time and over years. That's why I was preaching and I said, close all doors gently. Because somebody is watching you. Don't be a people user. Amen. Amen. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and it addeth no sorrows. Who will believe our report? Unto him the hand of the Lord is revealed and made strong. It's believing God and saying, yes, God. I've toiled all night. I've tried it. Somebody burnt me. I've done it before and I lost. But nevertheless, at thy word, at thy word I will do it. Nobody has yet trusted God and trusted in his word and in his wisdom and God will fail him and I would rather fail trusting God than fail doing things my own way praise the Lord that's the wisdom of the other book I think there's a whole lot I wanted to say the next topic I would have taken is breaking barriers but I promise as I teach this in the other churches like I said I will load the messages onto banking blessings and it will be open for everybody to pick a part of it. I'm passionate in my heart about strategic alliance, about relational maturity, the principles of human relationships, because nobody succeeds alone. Nobody succeeds alone. If you wouldn't mind giving me one minute and let me introduce something to you. Can I have that? My wife and I are in a very in interesting time. It's a transition time. And with your permission, if I may just introduce our mission. We've planted maybe eight churches in Nigeria. We're not starting a denomination. I'm not against denominations. And I don't make a doctrine out of it. I only know what God has sent me to do. And what we would do is apostolic. Plant a church raise a pastor and then move on to plant a church somewhere else so we have a network of ministers and churches that are related to us and churches and ministries that we have burst right now god is asking us to burn our bridges again we are leaving abuja and we are going to england one unique thing about england if you look at nigeria what's our greatest export commodity crude oil you can look at other nations and you can name one thing they are known for. What is England known for? What is England's number one export? Will anybody tell me? Um, I want to say tourism. Okay. <laughs> Football. That's, that's, that's serious. But everybody knows Manchester United, but that's true. Any, any other, what else would we say is England's number one export commodity? Coal. <laughs> they used to, but now with the um, sustainability, environmental issues, I think they've cut down both on the use and the production of coal. But they used to be. Liverpool was the center of coal. You're quite right about that. But do you know what England, Britain's biggest export today is? Yes. Education. The whole world goes to England to study education bill clinton went to oxford much more in fact much more 
the statistics are in here much more yeah the proportion of people from around the world even americans americans are number four half of the people in the united kingdom's universities are foreigners half 50 percent in america even in the most cosmopolitan universities it's still under five percent of foreign people the universities in england are being sustained by the money that the foreigners pay not the money that their locals pay and people are coming from malaysia from uganda from salem you know they're coming from everywhere the statistics here tell us the number one people foreigners that go to uk to study china number two india number three guess who Nigerians. Nigeria. Number four, guess who? USA. Hey, you said USA, we are number four. So even Americans want to give their children what is called continental education. That's what they call it. Continental. They want them to speak British. <laughs> they want them to go to Cambridge, to Oxford, to and so on and so forth. But do you know that the universities of england are also the number one recruiting points for all manner of trash in the world the nigerian boy who tried to blow up a plane he was the son of the chairman of first bank the man is a billionaire so people say it's because of disenfranchisement and poverty that people are getting into al-qaeda this guy was born with a silver spoon and was living with a golden fork <laughs> are you getting my point yes, but they caught up with him in university that's when he first started getting radicalized that's when he started getting involved with al-qaeda do you remember the other two nigerian guys they are yoruba boys their name was john and possibly peter yes i took a knife and beheaded a policeman on the streets of london these were christian boys and they were converted in the university the biggest mission field in my opinion in the uk is the university because when you touch the universities you don't only touch the united kingdom you touch the entire world it's at that time when these kids are forming their values and forming their decisions and receiving a vision for the world that they are most sensitive and that's what god is calling my wife and i to go to england to do and literally it's burning our bridges we are not we don't have a denominational support we have just the support of specific individuals who say we want to partner with you we believe in what you're doing we are relocating our entire family i was i was whining to god i said god honestly sometimes you do things like this i don't understand you said eh? what is it god because just as we are about to burn our bridges and leave the naira plummets and now one naira is 380 i mean 380 naira to one pound 380 to one pound which literally makes it impossible to sustain a british lifestyle based on nigerian income impossible when we would change 500,000 naira and it's how many pounds 2,000 pounds or thereabouts 2,500 pounds it almost breaks your heart and if our church in Nigeria is putting half a million every single month just to sustain pastor for something that doesn't connect nor benefit them in any way form or fashion it's just a mission it becomes an impossible task so the Lord told us raise partners everywhere you go talk about what the Lord has asked you to do. I myself will speak to the hearts of people and I will raise people who will partner with you, who will support you, and who will be a part of it. There are people who just say, okay, here's this amount and they give a good one-time offering. I, I would really like to ask for more than that. It's not so much the one-time offering that blesses us, but it's the consistent, consistent partnership. $10 every month. That piece of knowing that I don't have to worry about rent, I don't have to worry about feeding my children, just knowing that somebody every month is giving $10.
is more precious than the one thousand dollars at one time that anybody gives and so that's our prayer we have uh, a standing order here um a letter to your bank you fill in your details and send it to your bank instructing you know i want to be a silver partner ten dollars every month to be paid into this account and that takes pressure off of us it helps us not to have to think and not to put pressure and you know it's also you can't go do missions and be putting pressure on the people to support you it takes time and the building up and the teaching of the word for that to happen so i'd like to pass a copy of this each to everybody and our hope our sincere hope is that the lord will speak to your heart in one way or the other to believe in this vision that the lord has given us and see if the lord will have you partner with us thank you so much sir thank you. Thank you.